Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to hook up some uh, attacking animations and work out when to switch our attacking state on and off so that our character faces our capsule when we attack and maybe add a little timeout so after some certain time he just leaves the attacking mode. Alright, so what we're going to do to get started, uh, firstly as you can see I've added some melee animations. Um, so there will be a link in the description to download those if you want to follow along. Um, there will also be a link to mixmo.com if you wanted to grab your own animations for your own character. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to open up LC Sharp Project um, and we're going to also add in some animations to our animator. Uh, we're also going to add in a few triggers just so we actually know when to trigger those animations and our triggers will actually be controlling a brand new variable we're going to create called is attacking. So let's go ahead and create our new variables. So I'm going to scroll back to the top of our player controller script and under combat we're just going to go and add our public uh, bool for is attacking. Um, and what we'll also do is we'll create a few events. Uh, so events is what fires in our animations and we've actually used it a few times for the jumping. Um, now we're going to be using it for our attacking as well so that we know when the attacking is taking place so that the uh, player can't spam the button to attack, um, etc. Uh, so what I'm going to do just below movement, I'm going to create another region for events. And then inside there, we'll create our two events. So we'll create a public void for start attacking. And also that is attacking to true. And also a public void for finish attacking. And we'll set is attacking to false. Now we have our two events set up and uh, movement. So just scrolling a little bit down here. Um, so where we have our, uh, where we set our movement speeds, um, what we basically also want to do here, where we set our target vertical speeds, um, and our vert where we smooth up our actual vertical speeds, which we send through to the animator. Um, we're basically going to stop stop this from being set. Uh, okay, sorry about that. So somebody was at the door. Okay, so what we're basically going to do now is we'll add, our, add in our animations. So I'm going to go back to Unity, uh, open up our animator. I'm going to create a brand new layer and we'll just call it Melee. Melee, however you, <laughs> however you want to call it. Um, and for now, I'm just going to click and drag one of these on. So I'm just going to go for the uh, for the hook, so we'll add in the hook. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to parameters and I'm just going to add another trigger. So I'm just going to call it melee hook one. So when that trigger is called, we're going to be going from any state over to melee hook one. So we'll add that in as a condition. Melee hook one. There we go. And we'll transition. We'll transition uh, through to exit. Okay, so I'm also just going to create an empty, and we'll make that empty our uh, default state. And then make a transition to exit, so it'll just keep coming through and exiting the state. Uh, I'm going to test this just to see how this works. Um, if it doesn't work that well, we'll just take it out. Okay, so now we have our hook in there. We'll just make sure that it plays. I'm going to go over to our layers and just make sure our melee layer uh, has a weight of one. Uh, don't worry about any masks or anything just yet. And okay, so I'm also going to open up our input. And then from here, I'm going to actually add our attacking. So I'm going to go over to actions, hit the little plus, and we'll call this fire one, which uh, some of you might know as left click or right trigger on a pad. Um, I just like to stick with the name default. 
uh, for now we're going to have it as a left click uh, which actually it might not be called left click I think it's left button that's right left button cool I'm gonna click save asset just to make sure that it compiles and saves once that is done I'm gonna go back over to our player controller script um, and underneath our awake we need to now assign assign that event we're going to create a new region for combat you can now start to see why I've created so many regions it's <laughs> the script starts to get quite big um, and I'm going to create a public void for um, fire one So that's when our fire one gets triggered. Uh, so I'm going to create, I'm just going to duplicate our sprint. Except instead of print, sp print, sprint, we'll have fire one. And obviously we'll call our fire one function. Okay, so for now our fire one function, uh, what we'll get it to do is we'll say if not is attacking. Um, basically, if we're not attacking, we want to start attacking. So we'll say uh, is attacking equals true. And then what we'll also do is um, we'll also call our trigger. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to call a constant trigger. So we'll do our character animator dot set trigger. And uh, the trigger we're going to be calling now is the one we just created, which I've already forgotten because my memory is not too great. So we'll grab our melee hook one trigger. Cool. All right. So under events, um, we, we're we not going to be using the start attacking just yet, um, as we just set it up here. Uh, but what I'm going to do, instead of just setting it up here, we're going to be calling that function just in case we add any any other prerequisites to start attacking, for example. Okay, so let's go back over to Unity. We need to fire the event to stop attacking, uh, which I'll be doing in the actual animation itself. So I'm going to click on Fill in the Hierarchy, go to Window, Animation, and Animation. Then we'll look for our hook, Melee Hook 1. Um, and then I'm going to go over to our Scene, and look for our character somewhere. Cool. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to add some events here. So where you want to set that is not attacking is where you're happy for the animation to either be crossfaded to another animation or the player to attack again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find after the actual impact where I'll be happy for the player to chain another attack on. So for me, I'm going to go for 115. I'm going to add an event, and the event we're going to call is just finish attacking. All right. So I'm going to open up fill. Open up fill. I'm going to click on fill. <laughs> and I'm just going to unmaximize. I'm going to keep an eye on this is attacking boolean. So if I hit play now, we should be able to trigger our right hook, just like so. See how it is attacking is set to false once we actually make the impact. Um, so if I spam left click, you see we can only punch once um, at a time. It doesn't just keep like triggering. Cool. All right. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of, uh, let's come out of play mode so it's safe. I'm going to get rid of these end events here and I'm going to make a transition to new state. And I'm going to rename new state to empty. I think it gives a little bit of a cleaner look and saves the empty state being triggered constantly. Okay, anyway, moving on. I think what I'm going to do to end this tutorial as well is we're going to delete our infamous Jack. Um, I'm pretty happy with Phil, and I think I'm going to be using Phil from here on in. 
here and out, sorry. Uh, so not going to have a funeral, uh, you know, don't want to get too attached. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, delete poor old Jack out. Goodbye, Mr. Jack. And uh, yeah, so that's it for this episode. So although it doesn't seem like we did a lot, we actually added in our first attack, which is quite cool. Um, so in the next episode, we're actually going to go over um, bringing the player a little bit closer when we attack. Uh, so it makes it feel a little bit stickier. Um, that's what she said. And that'll basically give it a, a much better feeling um, of actually hitting hitting a target. We also add the timeout uh, so that our player goes back to his normal movement uh, after uh, a certain amount of seconds or milliseconds. Uh, just so that we can continue with our our normal movement because it looks a bit weird just constantly facing the target. Um, okay, so yeah, thank you for watching this tutorial and I will see you in the next tutorial.